Oh, sorry, man. I was jamming. I was jamming there for a second. My bad. Exhausting. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm glad you all could make it. And I wanted to just say this real, real quick. I'm throwing everybody up here. We're not doing any intro because right now I got shitty ass service and I'm not getting a new router till next week. So if I get bumped like we did on Friday, at least you guys will be here to carry the show. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sean does a great job. <laughs> Sean, <laughs> Sean's got it, man. Sean, yeah, he's mm -hmm. experienced. He's experienced. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Antonio. yeah. Welcome, everybody, to the very first Appreciating Comic Book live stream. This is something I've actually been wanting to do for a while. Uh, I think it was last year that I started doing the Appreciating Comic Book series, where I just looked through books that meant a lot to me as a kid. Uh, you know I'm really big into the art. So uh, this is really cool. And, and John was nice enough to jump on. I know he's a big fan of Dale Keown's, and we're going to talk a lot about art. I'm going to give him the floor. We got O.C. Steve is going to talk about the story from a new reader's point of view. So he just recently made the sacrifice, went and found every single issue of Pit on eBay, bought mm. it, and he read it, and he's going to tell us what he thinks about it. Nice. So before we get started, let's say hi to the chat. We had NTM Comics was first in the house. What's going on, brother? Good to see you. Uh, oh. Jason Black, good to see you guys. Thank you for showing up. Leandro, uh, I'm sure we'll get Leandro on one of these shows at some point as well. What's going on, Rob? How you doing? <clears throat> how's how's it down under right now crazy mad chauncey's in the house oh uh, let's see i know i saw rick somewhere yeah the mighty rick sailor as always one of the biggest supporters of the show uh me in, in general and sean uh we really appreciate everything that he does Love and we got past master dan what's going on brother good to see you Corey. Corey barton i haven't seen you in a sec man how you doing ja Ru? did i pronounce that right I hope it did. I hope it's it did. Murder. Art is looking sick. Thanks, man. I, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I put the, I put that intro together. It, it took me a little bit. It took me a little bit. But I thought it was good. What's up? What about? It got who me in the house, man. I love I love these names, dude. It just I really do. It's awesome. Got Marty Weber. All right, I think I caught up with everybody. If I miss anybody, I'm sorry. But we only have an hour, so I want to jump into this as quickly as we can. So. Real quick before we do, I hope everybody caught the Dale Keown appearance on EVS last night. Um, that was almost like a dream come true history. for me. Yeah, it, well, I mean, it's definitely history, but to watch it made me feel like a teenager again. You know, it really did. Like I, I, I caught exciting. it in I caught it in parts because I was working, but I was checking to see if uh, Ethan was letting people on. Um, but yeah, I, I saw at the end like he was uh, gatekeeping. Me and Dale Keown from meeting. That son of a bitch. <laughs> Try, trying to block that invite to the Jack show. Yep. He's just like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was, you know, it was, he was just, he wanted it all for himself, you know? Yeah, I, he's understand like, he, I understand he, that. He's like, Dale, you want to meet John Malin? Uh, <laughs> I got to end the show. I got to wrap the show up. <laughs> yeah. Is, is John Malin out there? I was out there too, but I, I knew, oh, he was, I knew he was trying to get out of the show. So I didn't want to be like, here I am. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, yeah, we do like, not have enough time for you tonight, John Malin. You got the Jimmy Kimmel, Matt Damon <laughs> treatment at the end of the show. You're trying to come yeah. on to say hi to Dale, and yeah, wasn't happening. I was beat. Yeah, so, I was uh, in Trevor? the green room. I was beating on the door. Let me in. <laughs> <laughs> you keep on knocking, but you can't come in. Yeah. <laughs> well, I heard he was going to be streaming tonight, so maybe you guys will all jump on after this, uh, and we'll try to watch that as we go. I did come in my pants. It really did. Yeah, yeah, I cried when it was announced that Dale Keown was coming to ca all caps, and then I, I came in my pants last night. I, I don't have a Trump drop for like EVS has for that, but but more importantly, the the follow up announcement that night was the fact that he, Pitt will be actually oh, yeah. published. That's yeah. the big news by yeah, all caps. That was, yeah. and I knew it. You know, it was inevitable. It was going to happen. Did but you? to hear Dale, I, I did. I mean, I oh. come on, it, it, he's going to do it, and I knew it from yeah. the moment. You know, it was going to happen. But to hear him talk about it. To hear him talk about Pitt mm -hmm. after not seeing that character for man, what has it been like almost like 20 years since the last Pitt issue came out? Yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's been insane. But to see, hear him talk about his character, I've never heard him talk about his character before because he doesn't do a lot of interviews, you know. Mm. So that was so cool. Um, all right. <laughs> I would talk about the interview for a while because I'm just so excited. But let's dive into this because we only have an hour. So I'm gonna change my camera up here get into this book 
So for everybody that didn't uh, follow this comic in the 90s, depending on how old you were or just what you were doing when this when this book came out, uh, you might have missed a few things. Now, the original backup story was in Pit or was in Youngblood 4. I've got it here, but I just I had this reprinted Pit by Full Bleed. I figured we'll just go. It's a little bit, it's less messy than going through the entire Youngblood just to get to the backup story. Uh, what's going on, Nasser? I got Ryan Blue Thunders here. We have PayPal. Uh, yeah, I saw a bunch of guys. Sorry if I'm not hitting everybody up that jumped in last second. I really appreciate you guys coming and checking out this stream. I will try to keep up with the chat as much as I can while flipping through this. But actually, uh, Jaro in the chat said that it was 10 years since Pit uh, Darkness. He thinks was kind of oh, the crossover. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, the Pit Darkness. Uh, I. I've got that too, but I was thinking like the main series ended like in what 2000 was it 99? I, I I can't remember, but it's been forever. So just the fact that we might get a new pit or we are going to get a new pit in our hands at some point is is too cool. So all right, Steve. Uh, before we jump into talking about the art of this, as a new reader, and I'm sure you started with the half issue. What did you think about this? I dug it. Um, I, I didn't have Young Blood Four, so I was glad that I was able to pick up the half. Um, the art style, the vibe, I, I dug. It was very kind of like '90s esque. Like I, I kind of dug like the whole space prison scene and the subway scene. The subway scene really reminded me a lot of like Predator Two, like when the, yeah, they right. have that whole chase scene yeah, when they're running through that. That's a good point. I always had some like you know the Terminator vibes, but the way that Dale kind of approached how he came to earth, you know, but yeah, I can see the predator scene too. That, and, you know, be, being a hockey nerd, I dug that the kid, Timmy got the, uh, Mario Lemieux sign stick. <laughs> when I, when I see that page, it makes me think the page on the right, it makes me think of, um, American werewolf in Paris. Mm. Uh, when the oh, werewolf yeah. is, is running through the subway. Oh yeah, yeah, good one too. I didn't, I hadn't even thought about yeah, that. Yeah, that the the splash page to to the right there, just where it shows them all in motion in in the subway oh. scene, reminds me of like Predator Two, yeah, a lot. And uh, I, I think I'm I'm pretty sure this came out before American Werewolf in Paris. So oh, I'm not yeah, trying to, yeah. I'm not trying to say this grabs from, but yeah. Well, they grabbed from him. So yeah, I was just gonna say. So American Werewolf uh, ripped off Tail Keown. All right, yes. something to I chew about. I like it. You heard yeah, it here. There first. he goes. Handed that that stick when he hands him back the stick and the little caption bubble right there saying like he'll be a good warrior. Like the little foreshadowing in the series that's about to come as you read along was pretty rad. What did you think about this character when you first saw it? As far as yeah, like how the story was set up, uh, what the character might be based on you know the backup story in Young Blood Four. Uh, this goes I, out to all you guys. I, I mean, it's just because of reading other media before. It's that that whole space prison gave me like Lilo and Stitch kind of vibes when they're like trying to contain him, and you know that they, he's going to get away. <laughs> and, and, but what I liked about the flip side of that is that he like got away clean, like almost like a Houdini act. Like he didn't like bust through shit and break through anything like the Hulk. He's just like gone, like Kaiser Sose style, like without a trace. And you know that the guy screwed up when he eventually just puts the gun next to his head and just goes, nope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, what were you thinking, John? I mean, we're basically, we're, we're pretty much the same age, I think. You know, you and yeah. Sean. Well, I actually, I think Steve's I, around the same age. I haven't read it since, like, it came out. So I couldn't tell you details. But uh, art-wise, I, I, I would say, man, like, with this coming to all caps, I'm just like, I'm looking at this. I'm just like, man, this would look good with, well, I mean, it looks pretty good now. Uh, right. Maybe even with like a gloss paper or something like that, maybe it'd make it pop a little bit more. But I was just thinking, wouldn't that be a hell of a thing if fucking Kyle Ritter recolored all of fucking oh, it? Dude, yeah. yeah. Like, holy shit. Yeah, I've been oh, thinking the dude. same thing, man. Yeah, if they did the omnibus like they were talking about and Ritter just went in and recolored everything. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, that, I, would be, that would be way, way expensive for material that's already done. But I'm just like, damn. But uh, yeah, for its time when, when this came out, um, you know, I had young blood. Well, pretty much all the young blood. So that's where I first saw the pit. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I remember the art. I like the art in here. It looks very organic. Yeah, uh, the, the inking that uh, I, I think Dale was inking his own stuff. Yeah, I think during. he inked this. Yeah. So yeah, art and story he did on this one. And I think issue yeah. one too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, man, Pitt's a great looking character. I I, I love the uh, what are the slit nose? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I yeah. evolve of the Hulk. You yeah. know, like a mm -hmm. big Hulky character, but an alien version. You see the claws. You see the big teeth. The monstrous hair. Like I'm like. At that time, I'm like the Hulk is a pussy compared to this now, you know. Like, mm -hmm. oh, I, I dude, couldn't me too. wait. Yeah, I couldn't wait for the issues to actually come out to as an actual series to to deep dive into them, and it's just inspiring stuff. Yeah, yeah, Drew, I think I think this was supposed to be like you know a weird kind of mm -hmm. Calvin and Hobbes kind of you know aesthetic to everything. I don't know that for sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure I, I read that somewhere. Um, Pitt and Hobbes. <laughs> and uh let me say real quick like you know pitt's been an influence in comic skate before dale showed up so uh oh, yeah. lost pages you know phil diaz has his crimstone character um i wrote a supplemental uh book called Bruner. yes like that was all with pitt in mind and dale keown in yep. mind and uh i mean i this is a uh, old young blood i did right here number 73 if anyone gets a chance to see it Oh, nice! But just just to show you that I'm I'm old school, like not a fake <laughs> not a fake geek girl. This is my this is my homage to Dale Keown, and just oh, to, yeah. just to send it home. If you look right here, oh, yep. nice! It, it's, Keown. it's Keown Street, so That's it actually awesome. says D A, so it's Dale Keown. So Dale Keown Street, dude. That's but, sick. yeah. This this was me doing my ode to uh, Keown. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. Jasper yeah. says, "No way, don't redo the colors." I mean, if they did redo the colors, I I think that'd be awesome. If they kept it the same, that'd be cool too. They'll I mean, keep it. They'll keep it the same. It would cost a lot of money to have Kyle. Yeah, you're right. You're right. This stuff. Yeah. So, but Absolutely. it's not unheard of because you know Rob went back and had the uh, some of the original Youngblood recolored. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think it was Matt Yaki. Um, yes. You know, like 15 years ago, something like that. So, mm -hmm. uh, looks great too by the way the Thanks. cd the cd does, uh, there you can actually find uh the pit crew cd on youtube uh and the entire cd is up there somebody put it up i found it once so it's actually it's dale's it. it's dale's band at the time or the music he was doing oh uh, yeah yeah sean's got it yeah yeah it's, so, it's his story was... if i can find it i'll give it to you but i don't know where it is who, well, who you know, sings in the band is it dale is he singing no i think he's the bass player in the band i'm not sure who the singer is uh, maybe if you talk to him on EBS's stream, you can ask him. All right. Could have showed Out of all the questions the other... that John's going to ask, let me ask you about the CD. Hey, Why hey not? Man, hey, man, Why who, not? Sung, who sung in your band on that CD, man? Hey, you know what? The dude is a musician. I'm sure he loves to talk music just as much as art. Uh, EBS Slapping was trying to the stop days. the love to come. Yeah. What about that? Yeah. EBS was trying to stop the love to come between Malin and Dale. That's true. Yeah, he that cock blocked. True. That that's yep. yeah. That's a long way of saying he cock blocked me. That's right. That's yeah, absolutely. Uh hey, thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. Yeah, everybody hit the like button if you get a chance. I would really appreciate that. Neil Adams recolored some of his 70s Batman is uh hideous. Oh, oh yeah. That sucks. Dale's art is gorgeous. I will be a happy man if I can develop a fraction of the talent skill. I, I hear you. I same here. Same here. That dude is he's a legend. That's one of the reasons why he's uh him and Mark Sylvester, they're they're one and one A on my favorites list. Uh, Dale Keown also taught me to appreciate uh, upper gums. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Uh, all right, so we went from, and you know, I'm not really, I'm not going to talk too much about. I don't care that these books didn't come out every month. You know, we all know the issues with Pitt and why there's only 20 issues ever made. So I'm just going to skip right over that. But we went from Young Blood Four which kind of introduced us to Pitt and got everybody excited. I mean, again, like we were talking about the character design, the art was fantastic. I thought Dale took a step up from the Hulk. And oh, when, yeah. he, when he came yeah. out with this, I mean, it was almost like he leveled up like two notches yeah, you know, or more. You he know, went on fire, just... man. Yeah, he went on fire when he went to the Pitt. Because like I, I was looking at an old Hulk, uh, Dale Keown Hulk issue, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago, just I had it laying around. And I brought up, oh, when I was going through my box of comics, I, I pulled up a Keon Hulk. Um, but yeah, through that, I mean, it's it's fine, but it's much cleaner. And uh, there was only a few panels in there that I was like, damn, that looks like really sharp. But yeah, when he went over to Pit, man, and well, you can even see from that half issue, man, like, yeah, it was like full bore right there. Like, 
he he's he's doing throwing everything into it. You know what I really loved about this issue was the heavy, heavy, dark inks that were in this. You know, it was like it's almost very kind of Max, like Sam Keith kind of style. Even though Dale's not a dark a dark artist or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. but because this took place mostly at night, he was able to really heavily lean into the blacks, and I think it really that with Chiodo's colors, which I've always loved. Um, the way that dude colored stuff in the 90s. Mm -hmm. It just, there's something special about this book. I mean, this thing holds up even today. You know, we're talking about how many years later? 92, yeah. 93, this came out. Yeah. Yeah. 93, like, to, almost, almost 30 years. Almost years. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this thing still holds up. I mean, look at this. Look at that. Art. Yeah. If yeah. this doesn't inspire you, mm -hmm. you know, as an artist, I don't know what will. Cause I yeah. mean, this, oh man, I've read this book so many times when I was a kid. And the exaggeration, like just like the the pit body type that's going mm. on there, just like those massive tribes, like that's just a great back shot, man. Oh, there yeah. you go, John. EBS is streaming right now, so I'm sure when we're done, you can go have, you can go uh, <laughs> finally meet Dale. Unless unless <laughs> and EBS John keeps, ducks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like oh, up to you, John. <laughs> uh, what do you think, uh, OC? Steve, uh, I know I gotta drop the OC. I'm just gonna call you Steve. I'm sorry. What did you think, Steve? <laughs> the artist formerly known as OC Steve. Uh, of diving I, I, into the first issue, yeah, story just wise. Following the, it, I just like the, the connective tissue even to the half issue because sometimes you get those halves or ash cans and they don't carry over. But the little footnote, I dug this. This kind of really hits home that Terminator kind of vibe. Like, but he's the opposite yeah. where he just wants to be an animal left to his own devices and left alone and. The, the shit just oh. keeps coming his way. It's almost like kind of being like a lar like being a friend of a larger guy at a bar where they're just trying to pick fights with you for the sake of just seeing if the guy is actually going to bear his claws and come out at you. And that's right. kind of the vibe that you got from this whole scene is he's just this stoic creature that wants to be left alone. And, you know, you know, kind of like in the Hulk where you had Banner, like in the old TV series with Bill Bixby, like hitching they're off at the side of the road while well, Pitt just wants to be left alone and walk his own path. And then these guys are so happy he collides with his path. Naked. That's yeah. all I got. Naked. That's when you know you're badass when you can just strut your stuff completely naked on a foreign world that you've never been to. And you're just completely comfortable. That's when you're you know so that confident you're a man. that you don't care. Well, he, he's not totally. Like he's not. Wait, he's not totally oh. comfortable because he does put clothes on at some point. He's like, yeah, that's a good. Point. I'll, I'll blend. <laughs> I'll blend in. <laughs> Yeah. I got some shame. Let me, let me put this flannel on. Yeah. Uh, and these chains. Uh, yeah. So I guess Ethan isn't streaming right now. He just uploaded a clips portion. I must it must be of the interview from last night. That's cool. I'm sure I'm sure he's gonna stream oh, at right. some point. Look at that. Ethan oh, uh, man, EBS showing off me, tweets. You guys are giving me Steve, blue balls, man. <laughs> I know, yeah. No, man. yeah. Shit. Uh all right, so fake news. <laughs> What I loved about this book is it was just straight up action. You know, it did a good job of, of bringing in the characters that we're going to see, but he knew what the audience wanted during this mm -hmm. period in comics, mm -hmm. and he gave it to us like tenfold. I mean, the action in this book, for one, the choreograph ability of Dale Keown to stage action scenes. I mean, he's one of my favorites. You know, up there with you know, I loved how uh, Larson did it back in the day too, like back in. Uh, the Savage Dragon, it makes yeah. you Spider Man, but power. I mean, look at this. Double, look at that. Double look page. at this double page yeah. spread. Mm -hmm. Jesus, the rendering. Fuck. It, it's so beautiful. I love the was the, the underlighting, the bounce shot, you know, what yeah. bounce line, whatever it's called. Uh, I love it. You know, he was so good at it, too. I mean, like one mm -hmm. of the best, in my opinion. You know, him and Portacio. Yeah. But I yep, mean, just yep. this is. As an artist, as a young kid that wanted to be an artist, and at that point, you know, I was I was drawing at my level at at 13 years old, 12 years old, however old I was at the time. I would see stuff like this, and I would just completely it would melt my brain because mm -hmm. I'd be like, "How the hell am I ever going to figure any of this shit out?" Because it just looks so damn perfect. Oh, you get a fucking lines? vein, man. You want me to get a vein? Lines? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He yeah. shows like the full size in the upper panel, and then in the lower panel, he's showing like. Even at that massive size, he still has those speed lines of like literally launching a guy yeah. into orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, Did he... great. <laughs> uh... And also, like, uh, even like the the coloring on the teeth, you know, like 
Mm. Computer coloring was so new back then. Like even the teeth is like a standout. Like look how well rendered those oh, are yeah. on the coloring yeah. side. Yeah, it's it's really. Let's see mm -hmm. if I can. If this will still keep focused. Yeah, I mean they were doing they were they were, they were doing it, man. Their books looked awesome. They had some of the best talent coming in drawing this stuff. Mm -hmm. Their characters, colors were great. The inkers were awesome back in the day. I mean, I just I can't tell you how much I miss the old image days. I mean, it's mm -hmm. just. It's just insane. This page is absolutely insane. Or this panel right here is absolutely insane. Yeah. Let me see if I can bring it up. I mean, just the intensity, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, just the way that that's drawn. I mean, you can see, you can almost feel that, <laughs> you yeah. know? And, and again, use of color there, like good stuff. It, it's these reds, kind of orange, like it, just a lot of heat, like almost like it's an inferno going on. But it's not just a, a play of the lighting. Well, it kind of talks about what you were talking about last yeah. Friday, John, where you don't need to be. It, it's drawn aesthetically to the point to like heighten the action. Like we're not mm -hmm. trying to be so anatomically correct. Mm -hmm. Right. You right. know, where you're just trying to show this burst of this crazy scene where just like all this chaos is spewing out left and right. And he's yeah. at the center of it. Yeah. It's like his arms are like two giant penises. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> and like Keown's always been uh, next level Mobius. People just haven't caught on yet. I remember seeing okay. this image yeah. all over the place when I was younger. Like, I don't know if it was on posters, they use it as advertisements, but I remember this specific image of him jumping mm was just i see it in wizard uh but just i mean for i don't know how many pages we're in here you know like let's say eight you know and we get this double page splat you know like where we where we first get to see him revealed if nobody bought the young blood four or if this was the first time they were reading pit to introduce your character you know like fully on after you see him just kind of wreck this gang and you just get this awesome just you know throw your dick out moment mm -hmm. Yo, yeah, like that. Love it. <laughs> yeah, even though the smoke is very yeah, you got the <laughs> strategically placed there. I like it. Good job, Dale. But yeah, Sensor like this. Smoke. <laughs> yeah, that's you know it's something that Dale was always great with with the big characters. You're going back to the Hulk, but what he did with Pitt, he posed Pitt in so many awesome positions, and this throughout was one the entire thing. run right here that I dug, which had some connective tissue to the universe because they're kind of going over the footnotes mm -hmm. of what happened in the subway scene. And then the the one detective's kind of like sharing their notes and they're thinking like, what the hell attacked these guys in the subway train from having a blurred ATM bank camera shot? And one of the guys <laughs> yeah. name drop, yeah. maybe he's a young blood mm. yeah. to explain where he's from or what his power source is. So kind of creating that connective tissue relating to the image universe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that was really that was really. Um, Jasper, uh, I'm not gonna kick John. Oh, I'm not gonna. Yeah, uh, that, Thanks, that's not cool. Jasper. <laughs> uh, what's going on, Random Task? Thanks for joining oh, us. Man. Glad you can make it. Uh, yeah, that was what was cool about the '90s uh, image. You know, you had seven separate mm -hmm. companies doing their own thing, but they were in a shared universe. It really, it really made it big. Yeah, the early you know. Spawn had Spawn looking at what was it, the television sets, and it was like uh, Savage Dragon was on there, and I think yeah. I think Savage Dragon had the same shot or something. I, I seem to re recall that yeah. same scene being illustrated yeah. twice. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It was like Savage Dragon three of the miniseries, and then I can't remember what issue of Spawn it was, but yeah, they did. I don't know if they copied each other, used the same layouts. I have no idea, but that was really cool that they I'm did sure that. They boxed it. Yeah, yeah, that threw me off as a kid. Uh, here was the the Terminator moment in my. I mean, this whole book to me was like Terminator Two. Yeah, you, you intro, know. Yeah, you intro is naked, takes the biker's clothes, you needs know. your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. So I can look <laughs> like a big man on a little motorcycle. Look, he even makes fat chicks look hot. Go back to that that, that next page, the last page. <laughs> <laughs> what this chick right here? Yeah, that fat broad. She's hot. <laughs> she can get it. That's talent. Sean, was the la last time you got laid, man? Because I, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. you yeah, might be a little wild. desperate. Yeah. You might be a little. Sean, Sean's acting the like the a pandemic? sailor at sea, like yo, seeing yo. like some manatees. Look, look, the <laughs> pandemic has kept me uh, preoccupied. All right, but Hawaii it, it, was a hell of a time. It dried out Jersey. Uh, sure. yeah. Past Master Dan in the house. I think I already said that. If not, if I missed any of you guys, I'm sorry. Uh, I apologize now. 
So yeah, so I mean, that was a really quick, if you read this book, it's a quick read because it's mostly action, a little bit of build up. We introduced some of the characters and, you know, cool cliffhanger here with some really badass looking, you know, alien bounty hunters that, you know, are going to meet a, a bad fate in the next issue. Yeah. Yeah. If you wanted big, tough dudes, like yeah. in a book, man, it was fucking and then, like, the, out. the center bounty hunter, like kind of has like some Borg vibes in in the next issue he kind of does the whole resistance mm -hmm. is futile mm -hmm. kind of line to him you know that's another thing that's great about the 90s man i loved how they just brought in so much pop culture and put them into the books you know because there was the internet and stuff it was you know social media people weren't around there to just call them out so they could do you know ripoffs of t2 and you know put lines in there come with me if you want to live kind of stuff you know but it was cool all that stuff was cool when I was well, a kid. They even yeah. they even have some like drops like at the the police department. Like one of the guys has like a Bart Simpson mug. You go to like yeah. Timmy's yeah. house and he has like a little Stimpy hanging out in the background for Ren and Stimpy. Hmm. Got this really awesome Sam Keith pin up in this. Uh, I can't remember. Did he do the Max after this, or was uh, it before? Oh man, I can't remember. It, 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 it's just it same time before. to me. So okay, yeah, it was, it was yeah, similar. Darker time, image came out around like April or May of '92, and this is '93. So I think, uh, yeah, I think that was all the interesting things of that one. That wet works. Ooh. Oh, the wet works. Yeah, man. I that's I'm gonna do something just so people know, like. This is a show we're going to do once a week, and it might just kind of be random here or there, but I do want to go over what works um, what works at some point. I want to do the, the original miniseries of What Works by Portacio uh, on here as well. So that's going to be something coming up in the future. I'm going to do, you know, if you've seen the Appreciated Comic Book art videos that I do, I just want to cover the shit that inspired me as a kid. And we got some fantastic artists in the day to go over and that's that's what's awesome about the mm -hmm. bygone era if you want to call it of comics that we will always have some cool stuff to go back to inspire us uh and all that so we had uh so here we go Let's, uh, another little pop culture reference there the little hans and franz guys robbing the bank Ooh, yeah. hans and franz yeah pump you up yeah so this was really interesting to me so you had uh joe rubenstein rubenstein however you want to pronounce it uh, do uh, you have William Scott Williams do inks on the cover, which I think was pretty awesome. I mean, that, that looks badass. But yet, uh, Rubenstein come on and do inks in the inside, and then I think colors. Yeah, Ch Chayoto was still doing the colors. Chayoto, Chayoto. But it there's a different flavor. I mean, it's still it's still awesome art. This was this was actually uh, the first pit issue I ever owned was number two, hmm. and then I went back and bought number one. Yeah, but, uh, it, it got very clean, very slick. Yeah, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I actually prefer the older, uh, the other inking that we that we saw in the the first issue and a half, like that kind of almost muddy. Like it gives it like a bit of just like an organic feel to it. Whereas now it's just like I don't know, it, it, it's just a little too slick now. So yeah, yeah, I, I feel the feel the same way. That almost throws me off a little bit with this issue, but not too much because I still really mm -hmm. enjoy. There's some awesome visuals that we're going to see mm -hmm. coming up. Um, Nasser, yeah, my channel's not big enough to take Super Chat, but I do have a PayPal. If you want to send all we these $2, <laughs> you send it, and I'll, I'll take it. Um, uh, this was the it? opening part that I kind of dug. Like, yeah. like him just seeing them like take the girl hostage and all this other stuff, and then literally he just goes into, oh, this is bullshit mode. Like revs up, you see the claws flare out. You see him like literally rip open the back of that van, taking Uzi shots to the face, like it's nothing, and then just like beats the crap out of these guys real quick. Hey, John, but then you want to... the no, recoil, ahead, sorry, sorry, the the, one, the the little transition here that I like is he goes from claws kicking their ass to grabbing the woman and then declaws himself. So like showing some intelligence and concern for her in this whole part was really rad. Oh, I thought he just got a little squeeze on that boob and then <laughs> yeah, it does kind of look a little, like a little TT. A little bit. Yeah, I'll put a little sound effect there, like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honk. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, uh, John, from the artist's point of view, you want to talk about like how hard it is sometimes to draw this big. You know, this is a double page splash on eleven by seventeen. Yeah. So the size of this fist and all that you know in this picture is a gigantic, but. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look silly, you know. I mean, it looks yeah, it looks fantastic. You well, know? I I don't know Dale's process, but I do know like a you know kind of the the norm would be you know to draw it small 
and then to blow it up. So he, mm. he probably would have drawn this, uh, you know, maybe somewhat tight, depending, you know, I, again, I don't know his process. So, you know, right, he, right. maybe he would have just drawn this kind of tight on, on smaller piece of paper, blown it up. And then he has the, the main amount of information, but trying to calculate that stuff at that size, like without doing that good underdrawing at, at a smaller size, like you, you'll you lose sense of kind of your, your scale a little bit. Now, better artists, you know, different experiences, but, you know, I, yeah. I would say most likely he drew that small and blew it up big and then gave a go on it. Um, but again, it, you know, you can just... The flavor here is so different with these inks. Um, mm -hmm. You know, maybe Dale also isn't doing as much rendering as he did in that first issue and a half. But like now, this is—it's is, almost looking like it's still good, but it's almost looking a little bit more like that kind of classic Hulk stuff. It, it's maybe yeah, a little too Marvel point. now, I, I guess. Whereas mm -hmm. the first issue and a half is just fucking like on the page, like everything was—you know—the shadows, the. The, the hatching and, and everything's kind of sl slimmed down a little bit here. Yeah, that's a great point. And we'll see that in uh he'll get a little bit darker in issues three and four, and then he'll go back to that aesthetic of issue one and in, in five mm -hmm. and six. He really dives back into that. And that's, you know, when we get to that episode, that that's one of my favorite runs as well. The, the five through eight, I think is, is awesome art. And I kind of uh, dug this page. Like he saves the woman, but lets him get away. And the woman's like, they got away with the money and he doesn't really understand the concept of what money is. Yeah. And he's like, you're <laughs> safe. I don't care. Bye. No, you know? I'm just like, sorry. I love the humph. Just like, mm. <laughs> I just, I was... Yeah, I'm and sorry, again, John. again, the uh, colors, like you look at the chain, like that. that's what I love, man, is I, I love yeah. that the colorist went in there and worked in, you know, these warm temperatures and, you know, he, he gives a shit. And again, yeah. this stuff back then, it was so fucking new to see a, a comic book in, in this kind of rendering style. Like all this stuff is just like mind blowing at the time, because uh, for people that don't know before that, it was flat tones. in the yeah. comics. you might get two or three different uh, kind of cell shaded effects. But, uh, you know, the, uh, Joe Chiodo uh, mm -hmm. was, was really caring about this stuff. So, yeah, that props, dude is just to him. He, he was amazing. Mm -hmm. Sean, did you want to go back to Chauncey? Is that what you were going to try to bring up? Or were yeah, you bring it up? I, I, yeah, yeah. I believe he said he used a number two sample brush, which was he was, oh, for, he was used for inking it. That's yeah, what he, he, he said. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember anything about pens after that, but I remember yesterday he said he used a number two sable brush. Uh, but he could have evolved and used stuff after that. But that that, that was his preferred tool of choice at the time. And I agree with Chauncey here. That's what I always heard, too. Um, I don't know. Maybe Dale can clarify that. But I always kind of heard that it was kind of an issue with printing. You know, whatever. You know, that's... I think I'd like to... That would be awesome to get that cleared up someday. I mean, don't get me wrong. This issue is still awesome. There's still a lot of really cool stuff in yeah. this. But it oh, is. Cool. What John said, I think I agree 100%. This looks more like a Marvel comic Hulk book than the first mm -hmm. issue did, which was groundbreaking, you know, in my opinion. Uh, uh, yeah, guys, Dale Killen. Yes, guys, what's going on, Emperor J. Bama fan? Thanks for checking this out. Appreciate Bama. it. Joe Bama Joe Chiodo is excellent. He's probably making a lot of money elsewhere now. I know he sells a lot of his original color prints. I'm gonna buy some yeah. of those someday. Uh, I think there's some pit stuff on his website actually right now that <clears throat> I would like was, to spend. Uh, this, this two page kind of area right here is what uh Dale was talking about last night with Ethan where he says a lot of, he, he tried to keep Pitt, and this is just kind of like as these internal thought monologues and bubbles, and then him talking to like Jareeb inside himself, like that other consciousness mm -hmm. was, was mm -hmm. kind of like that. Like he's a, he's a guy that walks around, doesn't say a lot, but then it's all this internal stuff that's going on inside his head. Mm. Yeah, it's a very good story. And again, I love this aspect of Pitt because it kind of gives like a, not really a Spider-Man feel, right? But it, it shows you a sense of what he can do on this earth. For one, he can burrow through the ground, which I think we find out. I can't remember what issue we find out. But the fact that he can just use his claws and his strength to fucking climb up a building <laughs> just by basically pulling mm -hmm. himself up. You know, like you, you see some really cool uh, stuff that he gave Pitt. So it wasn't... I, I, I remember it really kind of pissed me off one day. What's going on, Eddie? What up, Eddie? But I yeah. was... Uh, I saw a video on YouTube not too long ago. I don't know what year it was made, but someone was talking about how rip, how Pitt was a ripoff of Hulk. 
And yeah, because you know, Dale was on Hulk and then he did Pitt and it's a big character <clears throat> and blah blah blah. Yeah, but, but that's, that's what everyone at Image did though. Uh Rob mm -hmm. left Young Blood and or I'm sorry, left X Horse, did Young Blood, Todd yeah. left Spider Man, did Spider Man with a cape, you know, mm -hmm. called him Spawn. Uh <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh what about uh well I, I guess Larson did his own thing with Dragon because he didn't really he didn't really have a brand at uh marvel except yeah that's true he would just follow mcfarlane around and ride his <laughs> coattails um let's see and then valentino i guess did his own thing but uh will spritasio with um x-men to wetworks so he, he was still kind of in in that wheelhouse yeah they did they did similar stuff and i'll agree with that but like i've i've seen people that want to just dog on image and talk about how these characters oh, yeah. are straight ripoffs you know and yeah but that but, but but again like marvel and dc fucking rip each other off i, I mean exactly it, it, it's part of the comic book industry is that you come up with uh you know uh and a type and then we copy that type you come up with right. uh death stroke marvel <laughs> comes come up, up with deadpool, deadpool. <laughs> yeah so, you know it's not it's not like this is someone you that, that's just it you know people pick and choose on, on how they want right, to right. you know beat down somebody so that they'll, right. they'll turn blind eyes to 99 percent of the audience just so they can take a dump on one guy you know? i think that's the thing that bugs me the most is that it's it happens all the time in comics and it's happened all the time since since we, we were since before we were born you know rob liefeld if you listen to his podcast he talks about shadows you know uh, how companies do shadows of other char characters and they put them in their their books. You know, it's just mm -hmm. whatever. It happens. Yeah. Everything is rip off of something. Yeah, absolutely, Rob. Well, I mean, I Dale last cool night and was... I'm entertained. That's all that matters. Dale yeah. last night pretty much said that, you know, Pitt is essentially Wolverine, Lobo, and the Hulk thrown in a blender. Yeah. Yeah. Coming I mean, from it's... the man's mouth himself, so... Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you can see it. I mean, you can definitely see a look wise and just kind of feel wise. Um, this was one of my favorite pages as a kid. I would look at this page just the way that it was drawn for hours. Just day, you know, every time I'd read this book. Uh, absolutely love the rendering. I love how his hands are down here. It just, I mean, I don't know. It's just, that is what really drew me into Dale being one of my favorite artists as a kid. Yeah, he did great hands. Uh, but I love that that small little punch <laughs> scene over on the left because uh, only because <laughs> yeah. like we really get a good sense of scale and you know Pitt's really right. clever in that dude. So yeah, and again, like yeah. like we said before, the way that Dale could set up uh, set up a fight scene is great. You know, like the, you get the sense of a knockout, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't just send the dude through a wall. It's just like he he hit him, and the dude's like he's out. Mm -hmm. He's out. He's either out or dead. But he's going down. You know. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, this was <laughs> what a great way to to bring this conclusion to an end with a fight. I mean, the, one of the first times you actually get to see Pitt take some damage, and at the end, it doesn't it doesn't matter. It did. I don't, know who, I don't know whose it idea the pink matter. blood was, but I thought that was great. You know, the predators like, got green blood. I was like, Pitt's got pink blood, bubblegum yeah. blood. Yep. Mm. I don't know if he'll still have pink blood when he redoes the book, but. I think he should. I would like to keep. I'd like to see him keep it all the same. Literally <laughs> knocks that dude's head off. Yeah, that was sick. That Did I love. Kind of like the, the the cyber tissue that's coming off of that reminds me like a bishop from Aliens when he gets ripped in half. Oh in yeah, queen. yeah, yeah. I almost wonder if a different colorist did this page. <laughs> like, Maybe. like even the page before it, it it was still on, but when we get here, like. Uh, yeah, it still says Joe. Doesn't mean yeah, that he didn't have true. somebody come in and do true. something though. But like it just the yeah, colors yeah, here, yeah. I'm I'm just like the green on the gish, and then where we have this kind of blue background. Um we, we still have some of the yellow on uh pit, and that's nice, but like that punch would be the perfect spot to like turn that background from a cool blue into you know reds and oranges and yellows. And so uh, I feel yeah. like that's that's a little miss. That's why I like having John on because he he looks at so much besides just the art. You know, he really looks well, at the lettering and the colors and everything. You know, I can really explain it to you. Like that's I like that knowledge. To have well, on. that's what the, you know. That's the old saying, right? Is you know a uh, 
a, a bad penciler can make a good and can ruin a good story. A bad inker can ruin a bad penciler. A bad mm-hmm. colorist can ruin a bad uh, piece of line art. Uh, you know, Dale was working with one of the best in the industry, Joe, uh, Joe Chiodo. So yeah, uh, again, like you put you put that team together, and when everything's clicking together, it's fucking on fire. But like on that previous page, I'm just like Joe, where were you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, I'll always love this. This is kind of like your your Terminator moment, or you know, whatever you want to say. That 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 was always, and that's what made Beautiful, me love this yeah. character. Yeah, because you the, could do shit like with this with Pitt all the series, and he would reheal. Yeah. You know, it but gave I just kind of really like cool... that it's not Pitt talking to the kid because, like, the Pitts. I mean, the kid's kind of sitting there, and you can kind of tell from his like look on his face. He's like, I don't know if this is cool or if I should be afraid. So, like, this right. other calming voice that's in Pitt's bodies, like telling him to chill out, kind of explaining what they're there to do. And they'll be there to protect him because it's kind of like a genetic oops that him, that Timmy and Pitt kind of shared that, that kind of similar human sided DNA. So that's the whole reason why the bounty hunters went after him in the first place. Yeah. was kind of like, kind of like a Terminator thing when he's looking through the book for Sarah Connor and literally just finds anybody that's named Sarah Connor in the first Terminator. And it's just like Mm. systematically going through the white pages, killing people. So he, found that those bounty hunters found that genetic template for timmy that's kind of shared yeah what's going on jeremy um so this is the first time we get to see zoivid if i pronounce that round right zoiborg <laughs> so yeah i even i i pronounce everything as a kid wrong so uh but yeah just he had some sick designs man yeah. and this this is kind of this is interesting because here we are in another dark scene and this this almost looks a lot different than the rest of the book more mushy. It, yeah, it, it definitely has a little bit more of a feel to maybe what maybe Pit Pit half had, you know, mm-hmm. was just a little bit. But it really sets it up. Cool character, you know. What do you think of the flow of the story? Oh uh, wait, Steve? before we throw that one away, just yeah. as a little side, go to go to the very end of that one, and the ad that gets me is for the Gen. There you go. Oh yeah. Gen what X, would be Gen right? 13? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, they they, and, they got uh they got an order to like uh from the lawyers to to nix that from Marvel because it was too close to Generation X. And then more importantly, you have Jeffrey Scott, the man that would become J. Scott Campbell. Yep. And, yep. But more Gen 13 works too. Extreme Studios on the right, baby. Hmm. What bubbles are you talking about, Jasper? You talking about like? The space stuff, or I don't know, but no, I don't think he did. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. All right, so here we go. We're jumping into Steve. this. Was oh, kind of a, this was kind of a quick one. Oh, because maybe that's what it is. It had the other story that pretty much takes up the other half of the book, which is that a uh, clash of souls. So we got room, okay, room is still doing the inks, Giotto is still doing the colors. So, all right, so we might not. I wonder when Dale started inking himself again. At least issue five, I know that for sure. But this does have a little bit. It's still a little clean, you know. Mm-hmm. I love these. I love these vertical uh, layouts. Uh, John, what is the purpose of doing vertical layouts when you're telling a story? Well, they're what, really what great. Thinking? They're really great for. I mean, you can use them multiple multiple ways, but mainly when you when you're trying to show something tall. You know, like uh, McFarlane would use it like with buildings. Mm. Um, it, it's just a it, it, it's a great trick. It also it, it saves time too because it's like you don't have to keep figuring out like the left and the right. You just you know, mm-hmm. with the, be it buildings or whatever, you just kind of throw the information in there. It's a it's a smaller amount of room. You, half of it is going to be the sky. I, I I mean, there's many different reasons to use vertical panels. Um, yeah, but I enjoy them. I do them a lot. So. Uh, even now and like God, like I, you know that I, I'm like, damn, all these are vertical panels. I'm like, what? Are you doing? <laughs> so uh, I have to actually kick myself out of it, but they're fun, man. Um, just like widescreen panels, uh, you know, like McFarlane when he did like what was it like, um, his Spider-Man run, the the Spider-Man? one with the uh, Craven's daughter or whatever. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. you know, you you can use them like. <clears throat> It's a little bit different when they have that kind of staggered effect. It's like a different energy. But when you have 
three panels that are all same size, same width, height, and it, you know, perfectly lined up next to mm -hmm. each other. It's the same with um, when you do widescreen panels and you have them at the same size and width and, and you stack three or four of them on a page. Um, when they're all the same size and width and it, all that, like for me, it, it's like a boom. It's like yeah, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Boom. So you feel that. You, you see that pattern um, just like a drum. And then when you turn that page, uh, you know, you go into a double page spread and you're like, it's like, oh, fuck. Like, that's fucking cool. So I did that yeah. like on the first issue of Thunderbolts I did. It was like, boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, double page spread. But um, I, I liked this opening because it kind of was reminiscent of like a like an 80s horror film. Like all these like like idiot hunters just going in and the dog's the first one that gets the vibe, gets the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah. It slowly shows like, you know, kind of the Jason ch 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 kind of moment. And then he's just like looking down upon them. And the, the line on the next page is the one that I love. He's like, you can run for your lives now. Yeah. <laughs> and look at, I mean, just look at that shit. This was one of the, <laughs> this is also one. Of, I mean, I'm going to say this again and again. This is another one of those spreads that just impressed the fuck out of me when i was a kid mm -hmm. again look at those look at the detail in the veins i mean just i heard dale keown last night at evs talk about like you know maybe too much muscle right but in the 90s you had muscle on top of muscle you know muscles had muscles but it looked cool that's, that's what we're not too about. much muscle man look that's what i'm saying man it's like i'm on a quest to like go back yeah. what you, you know? got so you got you got to turn you got to turn that that logic part back off of your brain, <laughs> right exactly you know, and everybody's art would, would just be on fire if everyone can just start snapping that fucking logic off um yeah uh, i i love all the muscles even today i i think that would do incredibly well i think it, i think yeah. there was oh, never yeah. a time it wouldn't have done incredibly well dale keown on fire uh or 1993 94 fucking yep. he could ride that his entire career his entire yeah. life and never change that style and it would always be fucking cool. Now, it's yeah. still, it still matters that you have a great colorist because if, if you got someone that's dragging you down or something mm. like that, then you're not. Mm. It, it's not gonna. It's not gonna work. It still has to be aesthetically pleasing at, in the uh, in its final form. Right. True. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, there's no, such, no such thing as too many muscles, man. Not the way exactly. Dale Dale, uh, draws. No fucking. That's, way. Yeah, that was say that's what I was saying. But that was something that Dale was joking about last night because I'm sure you know people give the 90s shit about that but that that's my give me this every day every day over every day oh. over anything mm -hmm. and well it was like, what you were talking about on friday night john about crazy proportions and body like, yeah with that like this guy is a superhuman being he should be heads tall above your average 510 kind of human yeah. being yeah like pit is like built in perfect design he's a perfect killing machine no, he's like he's like he's like a perfect design because yeah, every time he's in a scene, he he gives that effect. There's no other way you can do it because he is so fucking large. Like that yeah. was in the design of the character, but also he's got that great proportion. Like like I was saying, the the wide shoulders, the skinny waist. Like mm -hmm. you know, I I think like I don't know why this burnt in my brain when I was a kid, but like uh, one of the Karate Kid sequels was it too when he goes to Japan and they all use the drums. You know, they start spinning the little drum thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, but yeah. I, that, that's what I yep. thought when I was a kid. I was like, that, I was like that's weird because it's like the skinny thing. Then the drum is kind of the torso. And then the little bangy things are like the spinny things are like the arms, you know. And anyways, it's like, yeah, that's a great, great proportion. Yep. Um, but yeah, so this is built in. So every time Pitt is in, in the thing, you have to look at him, especially with that double lighting that's going on. Um, and, and again, he has like a perpetual fucking aura of fire or flame around him. See, like there he is being lit with the gold again. Like, where's that yeah. gold light coming from? Don't worry right, right. about it. Don't yeah. fucking worry about it. It's not I really love boring. that. I yeah. love that about the 90s books mm -hmm. because it wasn't just like, but at the 90s books, at least, especially in image, and maybe it was just a Chaoto thing, but always had that kind of goldish, you know, underlighting. And it was just, it was yeah. cool. You and know, that's it, the thing too is, uh, again, that's great for contrast. Uh, what people would do today, it was they, they would light him properly on the one side, which Joe Chiodo was doing to the natural skin color. And then what they do is that with that under light, lighting today is they, they'd make it subtle. It'd be like it'd right. be the skin color, maybe with a little blue or a little bit more desaturated or lighter. Like they would keep it more in the realm of realism. 
Whereas you look at fucking like <laughs> Joe Chiedo with that fucking gold, man. Like, yeah, you know, just like when you talk about contrasting colors, like warms and cools, you know, the, the color palette, uh, it's very dynamic. And what, what he's doing is he, he's making the fucking lighting dynamic. Like the white lighting is energy. Now you can right. fuck it up, but he doesn't fuck it up. Like, again, that's, that's what you're dealing with when you deal with real professional fucking colors. Mm -hmm. What the fuck they're doing. I love this spread, uh, not just because it's, it's beautifully drawn like everything else, but I really like how they dropped out all the background with a straight white background. It really makes this pop. And I, the 90s used to do this a lot, and I always loved the fact that they did it. You know, modern colorists might take the opportunity to see this negative space and really fill it in, which might still look mm -hmm. really good. But there was something about a plain white background that really just pushed all of this right into your face. And it just, it, you know, especially you're going through all this heavy color, you know, all the backgrounds in this are colored, and then you get to this page and it really sells the impact of what the scene is supposed to be. Just mm -hmm. expertly done. Yeah. Uh, that, and I kind of liked it. It's like the, the inverse kind of symbiote. Like he's like literally forming himself like out of the bounty, the remains of that bounty hunter guy. So yeah, he hit himself inside. Shade. You know, yeah, he was, he was a cool character. So kind of like yet again, like another T2 reference because this is kind of around the time it came out, like an inverse T1000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was good at bringing the pop culture. You know, here's another awesome just Yeah, this is the page I like where he grabs the where he grabs Timmy. Yeah, again, here you go with the lighting and the muscles. Great the job. detail on that. It's just yeah. yeah. I mean well, he's creating a contrast like with with the xiphoid character where you know Pitt's huge and massive, and then he's just this long, lengthy, kind of almost violator-esque kind of dude. Yeah. I mean, yep. and Dale was so great at drawing like these kind of monster esque. Like, I mean, you look at the work he did in the darkness. I mean, he just he went crazy when he was doing the darkness run with the dark leans. Yeah, just oh, so good. And again, you end the issue a very, very cliffhanger way, but you know, Pitt's coming to fuck somebody up. Yeah, what and are again, you? Uh, yeah, yeah, again, you're back to this aesthetic of the oranges and stuff, and just really, just yeah. the flame rage. Yeah, and uh, you know, but this is also like when I when I when I'm talking like uh, the you know when people are talking manga or what you know differences and stuff. Like I look at a lot of this early '90s stuff, man, is very fucking manga because they're doing what manga did, like just everything exploding on the fucking page. Uh, yeah. This is a double page spread with three panels. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. Like, uh, with a manga, that's kind of the thing is like, you know, the, a lot of manga, they're like, you know, three panels on a page and they're, they're like that also because they're, they're smaller. So you're not trying to hold the book up here to read it. But, uh, you know, if you scale up manga to regular comic book proportion size, all of a sudden you get something visually where, where it's the image guys, you know, like that yeah. they're doing, they're, they're doing and not always, but they were much more prone to be doing three panels on a page and or just having these highly high en high energy, high T drawings, you know, faces yelling. You know, Rob was known for his yelling faces. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, uh, yeah, Dale Keown as well. He was known for his gums and teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Which in the far left is gums and teeth. Yeah. Um, Jasper oh. brought up the panel break and I love. I love the panel break in this page because it really gives you a sense that he's coming at you where this is all this flat in the background. And this really kind of sells this mm -hmm. 3d aspect that he's, he's just I, I just love him for formulaic artwork. He's just going to plow right through. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I love panel breaks anyway. So, uh, yeah. So I don't think there's really anything interesting as far as stuff goes in the rest of this, but, uh, Shut all right. I'm going to get to issue four. Now, Steve, so far in the entire first arc of the story, um, as a new reader, um, how did that impact you? I mean, did you get drawn into the, I mean, how was the story as opposed to the art that, in your opinion? I mean, the story, I, I dug it because of the fact that you, you start to show that he has compassion. So they're trying to play that like the, the villain himself has tried to pull the humanity out of him. He only used that genetic material to make like the biggest and baddest creatures for his army and like Pitt's kind of like his main go-to assassin, if you will. Like he's literally took taken the humanity component out of him 
and the compassion that he's slowly starting to show for Timmy all the way through issue half to now it's like, no, he's starting to show his humanity, which, you know, the villain started to look at as weakness, but you can start to see that he's having strength and he's showing like he goes from not caring at all to now caring about human life and human condition, like saving the bank robber, making sure that people are protected, making sure, you know, he goes from being reactionary to actually having a purpose. Right. Um, so another beautiful, in my opinion, uh, inked cover by Scott Williams. Uh, I think Scott Williams can do pretty much good on anybody. But I do believe that Dale got back to inking himself in this because it says story and art. Dale Chiodo is still doing the colors. This might be one of the first issues where he got back to inking himself. Uh, great opening with a the splash there. Now, that's just you know in your face. I love the fore, foreshortening here. The, the giant. You know, Dale was really good at drawing kids with a big head, but it didn't look too goofy. Right. You know, but you got the sense that there was a little person, you know, with the exaggerated proportions of the bigger head, the shorter arms, like all that kind of stuff. Uh, real quick, I, Chauncey, I, or not Chauncey, I'm sorry, I was looking at the wrong. Uh, good time. I don't know, but this, the old stock that Image used in the early days was awesome. I don't know what this is, but this stuff held up. I mean, you look at all of the original miniseries that Image did, Wildcats, Young Blood. Uh, maybe everything except for Cyber Force. Cyber Force was actually a little bit more cheaply made, I thought. But the rest of them had this beautiful stock, and it, it really does hold up. Probably 80 pound. Yeah, I don't know too much about that, but I would be interested yeah. to know. Yeah, we just printed uh 80 pound interior for uh, the, I think it was the collected edition. So it, it's thicker. It's not it's not the thickest, but somewhere between 80 and probably 100 pound. And I, I'm not sure what Marvel uses. I would almost guess 70, maybe 60, maybe less. Some of that is like fucking thin as fuck. Trash. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous now. Mm -hmm. That's actually why um, I was really upset with McFarlane Spawn over the last year because it just got really cheaply made. But Spawn Universe came out, and I really liked the stock that he used on that. It was back to being thicker. It was, I was actually happy. You're paying five ninety nine for that. And you got good quality stuff. Uh, 39 minutes ago, EVS announced a in a video, Dale, Dale's Pit will be coming to all caps comics. Fuck yeah. I mean, we kind of covered that yesterday, or they covered that yesterday when Dale was on his show. But yeah, I mean, that's that's the big news of, of the week, in my opinion, is that Pit is going to be coming back, published by all caps. Yeah, I mean that's gonna be awesome, man. I've been waiting well, twenty some odd years for that, so I'm one I'm big beautiful static. trade. Even if yeah. the warts and all is any indication, like the hardbound of what you're gonna get, and I went and bought all these issues individually, I would still probably buy that just so it's easier to just have it on nice paper, nice stock, oh, cool. and yeah. the collected edition. Yeah, yeah, Jasper, Jasper, uh, image. Well, Malibu did image uh, for like the first year or so, and then. Just to just for the just for all the announce of like like uh who to get their stuff printed, but after the first yeah. year, the image is like we're out. <laughs> we well, they made so money. much damn money they didn't need Malibu anymore. <laughs> Pretty yeah, fast. Yeah. Uh, well, they yeah, just they, outs they just outsourced them. I mean, they paid them a fee to you know get their shit together. That's all mm -hmm. it was. So it's not like they were working for Malibu. Malibu was working for Image. Right. Exactly. Um, and. Uh, yeah, man. All I want is I want to collect it, and got to be great if there was like some new a new story or something thrown in there as well. Like, mm -hmm. well, it sounds like he's going to do a collected, and it sounds like Dale is open and wants to do a new a new Series? run of it. Oh, yeah. new run? Yeah. Okay, all yeah. right. Yeah. Either yeah. either either a you know either a a, a bigger book, crowdfunded book. Well, like don't don't let do. me stop him. <laughs> No, no, yeah, <laughs> I, but, I didn't know you already. Well, let me run, so limitations. Let's, let's, let's get a fucking run. Yeah, I'm, yeah. At, down, at the, at his interview last night, because as soon as Dale popped up, I mean, everybody was talking about like pit, 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 pit. I mean, if you watch the chat, it was just like and bring back was, pit, 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 chill pit. about it too. Like he kind of already knew something was going on. That's why he wasn't reacting too much to the super chats. And then it's like, oh yeah, we're doing it. There you go. Nice. <laughs> what would be interesting to me is if he comes back. You know, does he completely just reboot it? Or does he try to wrap up storylines? Because, you know, it, issue 20 ends in a cliffhanger. We never get to see what happens after that. And there's a little, this is kind of where, like, from issue four on it, that the dynamic between Pitt and Timmy changes when mm -hmm. Dream's consciousness goes into Timmy. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's kind of like Pitt's Jiminy Cricket goes into Timmy, literally. That's, the, I always thought this was a really cool shot. Where they're all getting blasted uh, away. 
Yeah, and you, you see there's something a little bit different about this chick. Like she's there's something just a little bit more special than just an ordinary woman, you know. That previous pat uh, on the page before you where it pits like this, I yeah. must have drew that so many times as a kid. Like that's mm. just a cool in your face, like you know, so dope. So dope, man. Sorry. You know what I like about this? Attention to detail. He's got just this little little bit of hair mm -hmm. <laughs> that is oh. just tucked behind his ear, you know, like yeah. All this rest of stuff is going crazy. Just, yeah, just you know, and that's cool. And I wanted yeah. to grow my hair long because of Pitt, and I did at some point. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. even like that panel on on the page on the left though, with Pitt holding Timmy, it's like, man, that could be fucking yeah. a cover. <laughs> you know, yeah. like that. That's incredible. Again, that fucking lighting technique that that yeah. he, he had going on, the hatching style. I mean, that was that was a, like a win win formula on, on top of a, uh, a a prime figure with those proportions. So. Yeah, Sean talking about trying to copy like this kind. Of, I tried to copy this kind of lighting all the time when I was a, mm -hmm. when I was younger and could never figure it out. You know, mm -hmm. when somebody does it that well, you don't really notice it so much because it's just done so well. But you see all the details dropped out. It's just you have a little bit of cross, you know, hatching there. Uh, that's not really picking it up, but a little bit of hatching there that really kind of brings it out. And all this mm -hmm. lighting just you know. But just yeah, like I, the the character presentation on that, from him going from care to like total like. I'm going to rip your fucking head off mode, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, random. Did Joe say some, say man buns are cool? No, no, I didn't say man buns are cool. Uh, Sean said Pitt had the first man bun. I just said Pitt had long hair. Yeah, that's the are, reason why but, I wanted like, like, look, at, look at the size of Pitt. I think that he can have a man bun and pull it off. Yeah. Pitt I could probably do any, he I could do anything that. he wants to pull it off yeah. uh, for sure. So uh, there you go. There's your <laughs> yeah. burrowing that you're talking about. Yep. This is what I was talking about earlier when we first discovered now that he can kind of pretty much move underground as fast as he can move above ground, which was another cool thing about Pitt. Uh, this says again. splat all over. Oh, that panel fuck. looks like something sp like splat evolving into, like looking at that mm, shit and like putting it in his bag of tricks, you know, like yeah, the, the double rim lighting and all that sh That's so fucking awesome. That needs to be a poster. Just yeah, I'd buy it. I'd buy it. This was badass too. Again, in these pit comics, Dale always had a giant shot of Pit standing around mm -hmm. where you could really see his rippling muscles, which is awesome. And then he always had some kind of double page spread showing some crazy big in your face action. And which you is all that. from his mind, which is the crazy thing too. Because in that interview last night, he's like, when working with Peter David, he'd say just choreograph an action scene. Yeah. Like he didn't like he wrote the story and then it's like insert action scene. And that was a good thing about the artists in the nineties, man. They had a lot of freedom when it came to scripts and you really shoot, you really saw them be, you know, evolve in their, their storytelling because they weren't, they didn't have a writer saying, you know, panel one upshot. You have to have all this. You have to have all that. You know, you really let well, the artists. The explore. thing is that, that might be a little bit more case by case though. So, I mean, not every artist is is really capable of you just saying, "Hey, go at an action True. scene." You know, when you have someone like Dale or you know, so a, a real qualified uh, artist going in, then you can say, "Hey, fill this up with whatever you want." Um, you know, sometimes it's it's a leap of faith, though. You know, because they may turn in something that you're just not Dale, but a lesser artist would turn in things. You're like, I wish I would have had a little bit more control over what was. <laughs> being done here you <laughs> right know? right so um but yeah no someone like dale absolutely uh is someone that you could just say hey fill this in you know because right, he does right. his scenes are very clear um his setups are very nice yeah it's it, yeah that is a great point john mm -hmm. um i love this shot here and one of the, the one of the things that kind of i geek out when it comes to art i love how you can do a, a black background like this when you're just kind of uh you were showing that there's a forest back there without drawing a lot of detail, but your eye, you would completely accept this as standing in front of a bunch of trees, but mm -hmm. organically, you know, it's just kind of like this, uh, erratic kind of art style, but I love it. You know, just, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, it's a great shot. Timmy. Dale was also starter good at moment. Yeah. When Timmy gets <laughs> yeah. inside yep. of him. Dale was also really good at lighting faces. There was a an issue before when uh, the chick was taking a the shower. There was a picture of her face. I, I was going to bring it up, but I forgot. But just the the way you light a face, heavy shadows, bringing it out of. Uh, 
hard to do and not make it look silly. Like if you don't know what you're doing, that could look really, really silly. Yeah. But him and Sylvester were great at doing faces like that. Yeah, draw, uh, lighting a kid's face and a female face. Those are the two mm. hardest things to do because you're you're trying to move the the light around, you know, a, a skeletal structure. And what happens is uh, any emphasis on, on like you know the cheekbones, and all of a sudden everyone's getting old. You know, so right. uh, women, women and, and young kids are, are really difficult. You got you got to know what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. <laughs> Are we losing Joe? Am I back? Am I okay? Yep, you're good. Um, All right. All right. <laughs> motherfuckers. Uh, I love this shot, Timmy, though. I mean, this is just like one of those straight up badass moments where the kid who's been a victim for most of the book is now the hero. Yeah. And he's just, he, he decimates Oyvind and says, and never come back. And I, I just love the nevers in red to really sell that point. And he's just standing there like, oh, yeah, I just fucked you up, motherfucker. It's kind of like bad guys don't look at explosions moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like walking yep. away from it. Yeah, I thought that was super cool. I always love that about issue four. But also, so, yeah. uh, even uh, Zoivod uh, being down there as a corpse looks fucking wicked. Yeah. It's all singed yeah. Mm -hmm. and all twisted in different contorted shapes. Mm -hmm. I remember that this was this panel they had in a wizard magazine I, I i don't know if there was a write-up about pit or what but i do remember specifically seeing this panel in a wizard magazine and just being like they isolated just this part and it just it looks so sick on its own yeah see that's what i like is uh like on the right side i, I just prefer dale's style when he's using a lot of like heavy blacks yeah and uh i i, I believe uh it said he was inking this one too but you can see yep, he, yep. He, went a, he went a lot thinner through most of this book but when he starts pouring the shadow on like and, and getting in there and doing the hatching like that that's what i'm really digging on the most yeah i agree i'm right there mm -hmm. with you john mm -hmm. and when we get into the next episode when we start looking at issues five six seven and eight he does kind of get back to the heavier inking style of like issue one you can definitely tell a difference um yeah so this was pretty much the end of issue four it kind of wrapped up that story it, you know, it kind of just ends i mean mm -hmm. no do, no double lighting on that one yeah i, yeah, I dug right. this last right. page right there with him just holding the, the corpse or the remnants of the pieces in like one hand and then just walking out like a boss mm. yep yeah you're right it's heavily shadow there yeah not a lot of not a lot of up lighting <laughs> that's interesting but yeah guys uh so that was the Pit, the first kind of story arc for Pit, because we'll we'll jump on the next episode. We'll jump on with girth. episode. <laughs> that splash page for Girth at the end is great. Oh, did that even happen? Yeah, I don't. I don't ever remember it. No, that that's for Newman though. For uh, for Rich I, Studios. Oh, just, for some reason, I never seen that character. I remember all seeing this, but and you know, this is Jen, yeah, from each, one issue to another. From James, Jen, it was, but then again, he's you know, before from each other. So, no. huh? <laughs> whatever you say, Joe. We, yeah. we, you know, we, we you're you're roboting really bad. So yeah, yeah, it's probably a good time to wrap this up before your connection completely dies. What which it might have just done. Which might just happen. So in closing. Uh, there's Joe. In closing, Dale Keown, Dale Keown, fantastic artist, uh, highly influential. Now he's comic skate. So, you know, spread the word, guys. Uh, be sure that you subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, hit that like as well. Uh, that helps get this channel out there and uh, more eyes on someone like Dale's old work. It's just incredible stuff. And uh, again, you know, I, I don't know if we would have uh, Platt without Keown. Mm. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, Keone and, and Portasio are, you know, just two guys that were doing that or kind of started that kind of double lighting influence. And but Keone mastered it. Uh, and and uh, it's just beautiful to see when uh, Chiodo is really putting that kind of yellow gold lighting going on. E even though the yeah. light makes zero sense. Again, man, it's just, it's just pretty, man. Yeah. And again, as long as it looks cool. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so we're going to wrap this up, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Next week, we'll be back on Tuesday at, Tuesday at 10, and we're going to look through issues one or five through eight, I believe. So uh, join us again then. We appreciate everybody for joining us. We've held almost 60 people all stream. Uh, that is awesome. I really, really appreciate that. 
yeah, if you haven't liked this channel, please like this. I'm trying to grow this channel. Also on the Otten stuff, Sean and I do every Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, check us out there. We have some fun guests on. Uh, we just talk about Ott and we talk about stuff. And so stuff. And stuff. But, but before we close, can I just say like how mm -hmm. happy I am for Joe? Like I like his enthusiasm and excitement for <laughs> everything about Dale, for him coming on the stream yesterday. Like I felt oh, Joe's man. vibes. I felt the hard on he had. And I, it's, <laughs> Whoa, it's like, <laughs> oh wait, don't clip that. But, you have uh, you have a long reach. <laughs> yeah, some might brag about it, but not him. But it's like watching my 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 niece and nephew open Christmas gifts. Like you know, like the excitement. I'm just so fucking happy yeah. for you, man. Like it's awesome. So. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before before we get out of here, uh, wait, did John talk about Dale Dale's John Malin impression? Oh, I, oh, he that, yeah, that. he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I forget. Yeah, Look, man, these these dimples, they you know, people love them. What do you want? <laughs> With the pants through the states. Yeah. Joe's huge. Uh, give him reach. You see what you started, Sean. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Uh, it's late. Um, before we leave, guys, uh, I'm gonna start with John. You want to go ahead and uh, let us know when uh, the godlike campaign might be launching? Because I know we've talked about it before, but yeah. I know everybody's really excited about it. So uh, I promised, and I'm I'm sticking to it, that I wouldn't start godlike until we start fulfilling for Graveyard Shift Three. So Graveyard Shift Three is at the printers, and uh, it's going into production right now. So payments Hell were all yeah. sent out today. Uh, we got everything settled at Mixum, and uh, you know, so hopefully, I don't know, two, probably get the books in about two to three weeks. But we need to get Mark out here still uh, to sign them. So uh, as hmm. soon as Mark can get out here, then we'll start shipping. So three weeks is <laughs> I keep telling people three weeks, but it feels like it's just gonna be three <laughs> weeks forever. So. As soon as we get a chance, guys, but I'm just going to stick to my word and uh, it, it, it's going to push everything back, but I'm going to stick to my word and uh, then, then we'll get this next campaign rolling about three weeks. So sign up for Godlike on Indiegogo. Uh, we'll have a secret perk in there. That perk will be a, a, a discounted tier from something that will be on the main page. Uh, and also there'll be an exclusive trading card built into that perk as well. It'll probably be foil. So get it. Did Joe freeze? No, we lost Joe. Oh, well. Steve, well, anyway. uh, what do you got to promote? Uh, just my YouTube channel at OC Steve SDS. Talk about geek news. I do reviews on crowdfunding campaigns that I can afford to buy <laughs> on my nine to five and try to talk about those and just try to keep the conversation of pop culture going. But more importantly, try to denounce the stigma and mythos, if you will, of Comicsgate that we're fun. You know, don't believe everything that you can find on a silly ass Wikipedia or Google page. Mm -hmm. Make your own opinions. Back the books that you want to support. Enjoy the campaigns. There's a little bit of everything in Comic Skate. We're a, a smorgasbord, if you will. So pick and choose the ones that you want to back and the, the people that you enjoy and just enjoy the ride. That's half the fun of backing these campaigns and being a mm -hmm. fan is just engaging with people like you, John, or getting to know people like Sean and Joe and having these conversations that normally I would never get as a normal fan off the street to interact with creators or even for that matter, suggest things for campaigns that we want to see as forms of merch or stretch goals or tiers or perks. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, Sean, did we already cover you? I dipped out there for a second. Uh, type one is being lettered right now by Dexter weeks. And then he's going to do the, uh, the file format. So we should be heading off to the printers within the next week or so. And then that will be, again, like John, a two week to get to me. And then we'll sign them, get them out to everybody. You'll get that 90s cover gimmick, which some of you know about, some of you don't. But thank you again mm -hmm. for all your hard-earned money. Uh, uh, and stuff, Wednesday and Fridays. And Best Friend Show with Mark Poulton and Phil McNally on Thursdays. And the, the Wolf and Stuff sketch art stream for Art and Stuff Friday night. So all are invited to join on that. Daniel C said, uh, "Could John take Dale Keown in an art contest?" Well, you know, I think it'd be close, but I think we all Ooh. know the answer to that. We, all know the answer to that. <laughs> we need to get this set up now. Uh, no was... fear in the mail-in militia. That's right. That's right. Uh, yeah, and you can find me on social, all the social medias. Joe Sontag, out and stuff Wednesdays and Fridays here. I'm trying to build this channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, share the channel, hit the bell for notifications. I really appreciate that. Uh, I'm working hard on Reaper Destroyers, my character set for launch for next. 
April uh, with some awesome inks by Joe Weems and Matt Bat Banning and colors by Brian Valenza. I can't wait to get this out to you guys. Thank you so much for everybody joining us tonight. Uh, this has been an absolute pleasure. I love looking at this art. It gets me so excited. Uh, and until next time, we'll, we'll definitely do it again on Tuesday. We're going to go through all 20 issues of this run and just look at Dale Keown's art and appreciate it for what it is. So till next time, guys, I appreciate you. Everybody be safe. And as always, picture me naked. Talk to you mm -hmm. later.